Hey, I'm Jeff, and today I'm going to walk you through installing Dundas BI on Linux. Now, unlike, say, installing car mufflers, this won't be an exhausting job. But this should give you a feel for what's involved in the installation. Let's get right into it. Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. Disclaimer alert, Linux is technical. There's no avoiding it, so buckle up. We're going right down to the weeds. And if you're unfamiliar with Linux, it's often joked as being the OS where you need to do everything yourself. Just look at this birthday cake that Linux is given every year. It's not much of an exaggeration. So before we get started, you should know that the Linux and Windows versions do not contain 100% the same features. The Linux version is more limited than the Windows version. But that being said, it's probably not going to be a problem for most people. If you're already using Dundas BI and thinking of changing over to Linux, it's worthwhile for you to first take a look at our systems requirements page, just to make sure that everything you use today is still going to be supported in a new Linux install. Now you're probably wondering why the heck would Dundas release a version that's less feature rich for Linux? Well, the short answer is we didn't really have a choice. The problem is, not all Microsoft technologies are supported on Linux. The drivers just aren't available. And if you're a Linux shop, you're probably not using a lot of Microsoft technologies in the first place, since you wouldn't be tied to that ecosystem. So it's not a problem. If you're more of a hybrid shop, and you're reliant on both Microsoft technologies and considering installing on Linux to save server costs, you might want to rethink this, because you would be tied to the Microsoft ecosystem, and you might be using those features. So hopefully, with features cleared up, let's get right on to the install. To do the installation, we've spun up a Linux virtual machine using Hyper-V, and both Red Hat and Ubuntu are supported. So you're welcome to choose the distribution that best suits you. Just be aware that there's separate installs depending on which distribution you're planning on using, but it's pretty obvious from the download page. So step one, install and run the Dundas BI deployment wizard. You can see that once you launch this wizard, you're presented with several options. The first three allow you to add, upgrade, and remove existing instances. As we install this, we're going to be focusing on the Add Instance screen. There is an Add Sample instance if you're looking for a little bit additional learning. Just for your information, Dundas BI is installed on a Kestrel site, which is a cross-platform web server for ASP.NET Core. During the installation, you'll be asked to provide a port number for the Kestrel site, where the application is going to be hosted. To provide access to your external users, you'll need to create a reverse proxy. And you can see from this list that one exists called Hookup Reverse Proxy to Instance. So we'll be getting to this one later. A reverse proxy, if you're not familiar, is a type of proxy server that retrieves resources on behalf of a client from one or more servers. These resources are then returned to the client, appearing as if they came from the original source that you hit in the first place. Basically, this is the way that users are going to access the Kestrel site where Dundas BI is being hosted, but you'll see that after we install. The next option, X Virtual Frame Buffer Service. This is an in-memory display server for Linux, Unix, that enables you to run graphical applications without a display. Essentially, we use this for exporting, thumbnail generation, scheduled notifications with images, etc. This is another one of the services that you're definitely going to want to come back and install after the core application is set up, unless you're doing just some very light testing. And this comes to the last option, quit. Typically, you'd use this option when you're done with the application wizard. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen quit buttons before, but it's a lot easier than rebooting your machine to close out software. So those are the menu options. And to kick off the install, let's use the first option to start installing a new instance. So the first question you're going to be asked is do you want to print the license agreement to the screen? This is the part where you have to pretend you read it, and as I'm doing now. So let's say no, don't print to the screen, and we'll accept the license. Now the deployment wizard will check all the prerequisites. And if you're missing anything, you can type fix all, and it'll go and install all the parts that you need automatically. You don't have to go and find these individually and install them. You can see here that I'm missing a few, but the installer quickly takes care of it. Next, give your instance a name, anything you want. And now you're being asked whether you want to restore an existing database or create a new one. What's going on behind the scenes is Dundas BI uses two databases to power the application. 
One, the application database where metadata is stored. And the second is the warehouse database. So if you're doing any data warehousing in Dundas BI that isn't utilizing the in-memory, it's storing it in that. Don't confuse these databases with what you're connecting to. These are simply required to power the tool itself. And once you've got the tool set up, you can go and connect to any other data sources you want. You have the option here of using SQL Server or PostgreSQL. For my install, I'm going to use SQL Server. Now we just have to give the location of the server and a user ID and password to allow Dundas BI to create the database required and all the tables it needs. You can also name the database, but the default is good enough for most people, unless you're installing multiple instances. Now you're going to see another screen asking for the warehouse database. It's fine to keep these on the same machine, but if you have a reason to separate them, maybe you do plan to do a lot of heavy warehousing, you could split it onto a separate server. Completely up to you. Now, website port. Remember earlier how I said Dundas BI is installed onto the Kestrel site? This is the port number that we use within Kestrel, which is a private site underneath which the public site will have that reverse proxy to allow users to get in. The next page is asking for the admin email and password. You'll need these pretty much immediately to log in. So make sure you know what you're putting in here. Now this page here is prompting you very quickly on whether or not you want to install the getting started sample. You can do this later from the main screen, as I mentioned. But if you've never used Dundas BI before, this is a nice sample to get you started with some additional learning material. If you're familiar already, certainly skip it because it can help keep your instance a little bit less cluttered with projects. So that's it. The install will now complete and create your instance within that Kestrel server. Once this is finished, you can test Dundas BI to see if you can access the login screen. To do this, navigate to localhost and append that port number that you assigned to the Kestrel site. As I mentioned before, the next thing that we're going to do is add that reverse proxy so that we can give users public access to this. Let's rerun the deployment wizard and then select the option hook up reverse proxy to instance. You'll see that most of the work is going to be done for you here. Once you choose this option, the wizard will find any instances that you have available that you can simply choose them. And then it's simple networking options from here. Do you want to support SSL, HTTPS? Do you want to give a specific name to your server? Which port are you going to put this on? I'd recommend port 80, so it's easy. Do you want to open a firewall? I'd say yes, otherwise why bother having the reverse proxy in the first place? Then verify your choices in the wizard and it will do the rest. Once this is done, you can test the reverse proxy by going back to your browser and attempting to navigate to Dundas BI using the port you just defined rather than the one on the Kestrel server, and it should have them connected and talking to each other. Now the last step. Let's create that XFrame virtual buffer service. Remember, you're going to want this if you want to do things like exporting or notifications to image, that sort of thing. So select this option. By the way, it's only a one-time thing that you're ever going to have to do, but it will do a quick prerequisite check like before. Just like before, Fix All is going to help you get all that installed. You don't have to do it yourself. And that's it. It's pretty much set it and forget it at this point. So I hope this walkthrough has been helpful to you to help understand the various components required and why they exist within Dundas BI while you're doing the install. Now, if your intent after doing this install is to get into Dundas BI and start learning it, there's two videos that I recommend you take a look at first. First one is the quick guide to getting started with Dundas BI. This is a video where we introduce all the resources available at your disposal and just a great place for just general learning content. The other one is five tips for getting started with Dundas BI, which as the name suggests, will get you some tips to get you going quickly. So that's all. Thanks for watching.